The Lord bless you and do you good. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And good morning. Are you well? Amen. It's so good to see all of you on today. It is good to be in the house on this chilly morning. My name is Brian Washigadi. I am born again. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. I fellowship and serve God here. And a bishop, Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani, it is the honor of my life to serve God here at the Shiloh Worship Center, Deliverance Church International, Castle Rani Zimmerman. If you're a visitor for the very first time here, allow me to say on behalf of Bishop and Pastor Alice, Karibu Sana, this is home. If you're looking for a church, look no further, Karibu Nyimbani. If you're visiting us, please. Pass our greetings to where it is that you're coming from. Let them know that we love them, that you found believers like themselves in Jesus Christ. And we are honored to be here in the name of the Lord. Amen. want to share on something in the time that we have. We want to share on something. Um, we're looking at the book of First Thessalonians. That's where we are. In this year of redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. In the book of First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, we're going to be reading chapter four. That's our main text for today. It's a bit lengthy, but we're going to read it all um, today together. First Thessalonians chapter four, we're reading from verse um, that's verse nine to twelve. Allow me to read from verse one to verse eight, and then we're going to read together from verse nine to verse twelve. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 1, I'm reading in the New King James, it says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the name of the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk to please God. For you know what commandments we give you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, for this is the will of God, your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Four, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Verse five, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. Six, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. We also, as we also forewarned you, and testified. Verse seven, for God did not call us unto uncleanness, but in holiness. Eight, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Verse 9, we'll read it all together. Are you ready? All the way through to 12. From verse 9, and it says, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia, but we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. May the Lord bless his word and the reading of his word. That's what we're going to be sharing today. I've titled it, um, The Believer's Practice, which is guarding the anointing. Many times when I do my own personal study, there are many places in scripture, and I'm sure you've seen it as well, where when you're reading, you find there are very specific instructions on what to do. Those are things I like to call for my own Bible study, the believer's practice. As a believer, these are things I should practice daily. They should be in my everyday ordinary life. So I call them the believer's practice. There are many things all throughout scripture, the things that God has called me and you to do as a believer. So in this collection of things that we call the believer's practice, today we are looking at what I am calling guarding the anointing. That this is the practice of the believer to guard the anointing, to protect the anointing, to watch over the anointing of God over their lives. Just a little bit of background, because we are right now in chapter 4, because this book has come from somewhere. We, there is a chapter 1 and 2 and 3. So Thessalonians, this is a letter of the Apostle Paul, and he's not writing it alone. He has some co-authors. It actually says, greeting, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. So he has some people that he's writing together with, or some people that are present with him. This letter is coming from the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul is writing to this church that he himself founded. You can find the story of the founding of the church of, at Thessalonica in the book of Acts chapter 17. We may not look at, at it today just because of time, but in your own private study, just maybe you want to increase your knowledge or your reach of the word, you want to go to the book of Acts chapter 17 from verse 1 to 9. You'll find a couple of things 
that are, are out there. Now, when Paul is um, on his second missionary journey, he founds this church. It actually says, allow me to just read a little bit of it. It says, now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, and there there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them. And for three Sabbaths, about three weeks then, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, this Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and, of few, and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men, goons for hire, from the marketplace, and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar, attacked the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people, and the story continues to go on and on. Just a little bit of the background. So Paul has already taken some time, about three Sabbaths long, he has... He he has um, gone into, uh, he's gone to um, Thessalonica and he stayed there. He's teaching the people for three Sabbaths. He's reasoning with them. He's setting them up. Now, these are people who are not initially believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, where the church is founded or where, right where they are in Thessalonica, these are people who used to worship many gods. If you read in chapter one um, of the first Thessalonians that we are talking about, he's commending them for, in verse nine, it says, for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned from to God from idols to serve the living and true God and how you wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come now he has been teaching them for about three sabbaths and so he establishes this fellowship what we know as a church establishes this fellowship he would have been with them longer but just like we've read we find there are a couple of men who are not so happy it says um, some of them who are not, uh, some, some of the Jews who are not persuaded became envious and they went to the market. They took some evil men. You know that saying that in every market, man, there is a, you know that one? They went in every marketplace. They went to the market, took some evil men, the, we are calling goons for hire, went and took them and brought them to where Akina Paul was, looking for them so that they may drive them out. These were people who are not believers, Jews who are not persuaded about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So after Paul has been teaching for three Sabbaths, there are men who receive that news. And a big chunk of their issue, when they take it forward, in fact, when they take it to the authorities, they are saying there are some men, you will see it if you read it, who are turning the world upside down. They have now come to cause uproar in this side of the city. In in fact, they are saying there is another king who is not the king that we know. There is another king and his name is Jesus. That was the big chunk of their argument. That was the charge they had against Akina Paul. All right. And so that is how the story goes. The, the men, the goons for hire, are good at their job. They go inside. They go to a man called Jason. They actually bring them out, wanting to even go into the extent of um, touching his house. And they reason with them. Finally, they are released. Akina Jason are released. Akina Paul have not been caught. The story anyway continues. And um, some of the believers uh, are, are afraid. Well, not afraid, really. They are mindful, and so they help Akina Paul in their getaway. They sneak them out of the city. Now, that is, why, that is the reason why Paul is not able to sit with the church at Thessalonica for as long as he would have wanted to stay with them. As long as maybe he would have uh, done if there was no... We are coming to where the church was founded, or how this letter comes to be. So, as we continue to read that, we find that some of the things that have preceded the founding of this church, just before that in Acts chapter 16, we are reading Acts 17. In Acts chapter 16 is a common story that we have come across of Paulo and Sila wa Liomba, Milango ya Gereza, Ikafunguka. So they've just been in prison. The reason why they had been thrown in prison, again, another very, uh, neither here nor there reason, because they cast a demon out of a girl who was going around and they were, was being a nuisance to their ministry. It's an interesting story. You might want to go and read it for yourself. Acts chapter 16. Anyway, the story continues. So after they have come out of there and they have been miraculously broken out of prison in the midnight hour, singing praises and, um, and worship to the Lord, um, after they, they, they are brought out and they are chased out of the city. Well, really, they really are chased out of the city. This is when their journeys lead them to where they are in Thessalonica. So for about three Sabbaths, they've been teaching them. So they have left a young church. 
a church of new converts. While they are away, it is not an easy time to be a believer in Jesus Christ back in the day. Not like right now. Even right now, it's not very easy. But if you are to compare then and now, we are living the soft life. We are soft life believers. Those ones back in the day, it was a thing. It was, how do you just turn away? How do you just turn away from all these idols? They, they couldn't understand. That's why it says that Paul reasoned with them. See in Isaiah where it says, come, let us reason together, the Lord says. Because some of us, it required reason for us to come into the kingdom. Do you remember that day when you gave your life to Jesus? hospital mission. Unadhani sasa bab, um, kwa sababu amefinyika na ugonjwa wa hospitalini atasema ndio nataka kuokoka. Ah. Hata ana kazi yako. Anakuangalia hivi pastor Beatrice anatuambia hawa anatuangalia kutoka mguu. Amejifunika hivi na shuka. Umesimama hapo umeenda kumpelekea the good news. Anakuangalia kutoka mguu. Kitoka kiatu aone ni nini umemleta. <laughs> Naambia umemletea Yesu anasema enda ukuje hiyo siku nyingine. Wacha mimi siku nyingine nitakupata hapa kweli. Anyway about reasoning. So Paul had reasoned with them and then he has left them. But you know that those, those three, those three uh, Sabbaths that he had reasoned with them were not barely enough, are not enough. You know because you're a believer. You know that they are not enough for anyone to be fully grounded in the word. In the first service, Pastor Angeshi was teaching us about those levels of walking with Jesus in the Christian journey. Those places, going from the shallow place to the deep place in Jesus Christ. You know that three weeks is not enough. Because every day we are being worked on by God. That is the journey of salvation, isn't it? That you have been saved by Jesus because of his finished work at Calvary. Now you are being saved, even today. And then when all is said and done and he returns in glory, we shall be saved. So we are believers, works in progress. Buona If you're looking for something to add to your status today, you can write work in progress. You're welcome. All right. So that is what was happening. Three weeks were not enough. But so Paul, when you continue to read, when Paul is writing in the letter, he's detailing and saying that after some time of being with them, of being without them, they started to feel like, wanajua kuna majaribu. They know that believers are appointed to suffering. Actually, if you continue to read it in chapter 2, it tells you that they know that believers are appointed to suffering, as all of us may know. Yesterday we were sharing with a small group of the young professionals and we were saying, isn't it an interesting thing that the universally known symbol for the Christian faith is a cross and not a feather bed. Imagine if the symbol for Christianity would be a mattress. Soft life. Because when you came to Jesus, what was the idea that was sold to you? Tambarare kwa Yesu, hakuna milima. Sindio? Alafu kaingia kwa okovu. Meona mnamna gani tangu ingie? Mambo mazito, mambo magum. Mambo moto, moto kwa kweli. It's like you have a target on your back. You're thinking that now things will be new. But blessed be God that he uses these things to mold us, to make us who we are going to be. Hallelujah. We are reminded and encouraged by the words of the apostle. Is it in First or Second Corinthians when he's saying that we may be hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We may be uh, struck down, but we are not destroyed. In fact, on the outside, we may be wasting away, but on the inside, there is a roaring victory. Why? Because the symbol of our faith reminds us constantly that our master has overcome death and hell and the grave. What then is too difficult for him? Hallelujah. Last Sunday, the bishop reminded us that we can live with this hope of saying one day is coming, oh glorious day, that every believer shall look dead straight in the eye and ask, oh death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. Because the sting of death is sin. When somebody has died and they are not in Jesus Christ, man, your story is over. There is no appeal. There is no psiju pagatory. Forget those things. At Unaketi, we pray for you to kusaidia uvuke kutoka maali uko uingie kwa uzima wa milele. Wajichagulia hapa mwenzangu kwa kweli. Usipo jichagulia hapa hamna intercessors wa kukuombea uvuke. Chagua leo. If you're in the house, you're an unbeliever, you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, you're in the right place. Today is the day of salvation. Scripture says, when you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. Usingangane, amerizo na wewe jamani siku nyingi. Leo, itoshe. 
akuguze tu hivi sema yes i am ready i believe you are lord and savior you are worried about how you shall stand umeokoka mara nyingi uki backslide ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. it is jesus that saves and sustains and satisfies he will keep you hallelujah the bible reminds us in jude is it 24 and it says that now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless at the coming of our lord and savior jesus is the only one that can keep you and me from falling not our our good works not our kuji finyilia not at all yet he has given us some things that we can do along that journey which is what we are looking at today the believers practice hallelujah bwana yesu asifiwe Are we still together in the house? That's a bit of the background that we are looking at then. So in those three sabbaths we go back to that again he has reasoned with them and then he has left them and so as any father would be as any pastor would feel any leader that is a good steward would feel when you have been you have a new believer uh, and you can you have not had some time to consolidate them you feel like you're missing out on their lives you are worried the parents in the house will tell us you get worried even when your child has already been married you're wondering wa mekula <laughs> we'll not ask you parents who have children that are already married we'll not ask you to lift your hands but some of you know that your children are married but you're still calling them in the night maana wa julia tu hali mmekula nini unajaribu kujua kama walikula ambia hata hatujakula sema hamjakula nitakutumia nini anasema usinitumie kitu tulikula nje sasa tumekuja tukiwa tumeshiba but that is the way of parents ama namna gani well i hear <laughs> so that's that's how paul was so paul was uh, because he was a good consolidator he's sitting and wondering how are these people like because it is appointed for believers to go through these things that is how the lord works in us that is how the lord works the image of Jesus Christ if you read it in Malachi chapter 3 uh, is it 3 or 6 there about it says that he will sit over them like a refiner sits over a fire watching with his watchful eye the same way he sits with gold in his hand turning it over the fire turning it over and over and over again until he finally sees it pure he's not going to take it too fast lest it is yet impure and he's not going to let it stay there too long yet it is lest it is destroyed just the right amount of fire and that's what the lord has allowed to every one of us to everybody their own portion of what is going to work on them bwana yesu asifiwe so if you're going through some trials and tribulations i want to let you have some good news there is no that has come to you that has not been faced by our lord and savior hebrews will remind us in chapter 4 towards the end that we do not have a high priest who is untouched by the feeling of our infirmity but one who was tested in every way yet without sin that is the one we call master that whatever it is that you're going through every human emotion he has felt it and he has overcome he felt it the right way he went through the test without cheating and he came out with flying colors what we call flying colors so we can trust him we can put our lives on him again we can look to him as the author the perfecter the finisher of our faith hallelujah so paul is wondering how are my children doing then he realizes she does see you how ana shida na watu wako na shida na mimi paul so he sends timothy to go out so timothy goes out goes and checks on them when he's on the way he's met with good news about the church in Thessalonica even though they had only been um, consolidated for just three sabbaths ah he gets good news anapata huko mambo mazuri kwa kweli anasikia wanaendelea vizuri anafika huko anapata wanaendelea vizuri ako like ah what wa mungu the lord has preserved them the lord has taught them the lord is keeping them as he's coming back he comes with great news for paul he's telling them kanisa limesimama unajua zile siku zilikuwa zimejawa na anticipation hakuna hati umefika unatuma message unawaambia nilifika wako sawa hata wanaendelea vizuri niko nao hapa tunafanya video call ndio hawa say hi to dad paul hi hiyo <laughs> <laughs> maneno haikukua iko siku hizi sometimes you wonder even how how do our parents relate not relating tunamwambia nitakupigia simu saturday ijayo saa tatu. huu unaenda kwa ile simu yenye kwa karibu ya primary school Majabu makuu eh no wonder the the writer says there are things that he does not understand the way of a man and his maiden is one of them Timlipatana tu kukiwa bila rununu na internet mkaambia na we love you <laughs> Anyway so Paul had to wait wakangoja lakini alipoletewa ujumbe his heart was so excited he pens down this letter 
to them. That's where the letter comes from. All this time just to explain where the letter is coming from. It is important to have that background for the few things that we're going to share. Because we realize that there was work that was yet to be done, but they had already been given the basics of the Christian life. The basics which you and I, if we have listened to God, because he's saying these things have not been taught by me, guys. These things are taught by God himself. Now, they were not like us. They, when they were given the message, are being instructed. Us, we already have this message. We already have the instruction. And when high school, they used to tell us, when you just take the word Bible, and one of the interesting acronyms that you could create for yourself, it's not law, it's not written in the word, but it could easily be basic instructions before leaving the earth. Just if you look at it literally, it just feels nice to think, I'm, I, see, 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 I'm not um, beating around the bush wondering how do Christians behave. We know how Christians ought to behave. Those are the things we call the believer's practice. It's like imagine a nation without laws. How do you live? In Kenya and a few of the countries, we know that you drive on the left side of the road. That is a law. Imagine now we don't have that law. We una drive kule convenient. So ni nataka kutokea na hapa na niko hii side. Unatoka tu chua. Mwingine alikuwa na drive ya huku juu anataka kuingia huku. Ndio nyinyi mmepatana. There would be very many I don't know whether we would be as many as we are because it would just be tungekuwa tumekwisha. So the laws keep order. So when the Lord has given us his word, it is not to finyilia us. It is so that we can do things decently as our bishop likes to say and in order. So we are not flailing in the wind. We know what to do. Even for you and I as believers, just as a be we are representatives of Jesus Christ. We are diplomats in this kingdom. Wherever you go, you speak for the kingdom. Amen. That when people look at you, they can tell that there's something different. There is a God in heaven. So, anyway, Paul is talking to them and gives them this set of things to do. He's telling them you are set apart. You are different people. He says to them, because this is the will of God, verse 4, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. He says to them, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, like those people where you came from. No, 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 no. That's not how you carry yourself. Now you are new people. You are children of the light. You ought to carry yourselves as such. In fact, he uses an interesting word, and it says, anybody who does that, do not take advantage or defraud your brother in this matter. That if you engage in sexual immorality, you're defrauding the person you're with. That is an interesting word. Nika unamkon. Unakon uom to munyam konae. Anawambia, it shall never be mentioned of you. It will never be said in your midst. For God did not call us uh, to uncleanness, but in holiness. So Paul is speaking to them and encouraging them. You'll find a thing, a language that he uses throughout this, um, this letter to them. He says that um, you should abound more and more. He's saying to them, you need to do these things more and more. You need to love one another more and more. He's saying not that you don't know these things, not that you're not doing them, only that you need to do them more and more. So that when we are preaching in church, when you're coming to church on Sundays, and the message is being shared or in your cell, you're not thinking, ah, na it's not that you're not doing them. It is just that you ought to do them more. If you read it um, in the book of, uh, is it Second Peter? Second Peter chapter 1, when it's talking about what you need to add to your faith. It says, and to your faith you need to add, and to this add, and to this add these things. It says in verse 8, for if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. In other words, you, don't, you, you should not just have these qualities, you should abound in them. Is that the word? Abound in them. Yani zikuzidishie, ndani yako, ukuwe na hiyo mambo na izidi. Usiseme tu, I stayed away from sin yesterday. Even today, do it again. Even tomorrow, do it again. Even the other day, do it again. And when it, it gets difficult, ask for help. We have a master who has the cheat codes for life. He knows he has done it himself. 
He has gone through it without sin. You can trust him. You're wondering, if I don't do this, where will I get my provision? No, we have one who has gone ahead of us non-fraudulently. He knows how to go to the other side. He can provide for you. But you must ask for yourself. You must get it for yourself. So he says to them, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. And that's where we pick it up from. Remember, that's where we read together. That he who rejects um, these things does not reject man, but God who has given us also his Holy Spirit. That is the anointing we are talking about. God has poured out his Holy Spirit to every single one of us. The seal, he has sealed us with the seal of the Holy Spirit. All of us are marked for God by the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have that seal of the Holy Spirit. You may not have all the gifts, and that's a thing that you should desire. That's how the, it ends in, is it 1 Corinthians chapter 12? It ends by saying, let everyone desire all these gifts. And then it crosses over to talk about why we need love. So the Holy Spirit has been given to every one of us. That's why we, we have the anointing, the divine enablement. So then we look, he continues now to speak to them about a brotherly and orderly life, how to guard this life of the anointing. And that's what we are looking at again as we begin to wrap it up. He says to them, but concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write for you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase again more and more. If you find, if you're reading it and you find that there's something that you're already doing, great, good job. Don't stop there. Increase more and more. You should abound in these things. It says that these things are yours and abound. You will be kept from being unfruitful or barren in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 8. So increase in these things all the more. And so he starts to give them a couple of things that they need to do after having, so that they may be able to lead a brotherly and orderly life, so that they may continue to remain in the place of the anointing, so that they don't rob themselves of the gift of God. If you read the Bible in Psalm 119, it talks about how can a young man keep his way pure? Uh, it is by living according to the law of the Lord. He says, your word have I hid in my heart, but I may not sin against you. If you read the message paraphrase, it says it interestingly. It says, I have stored your word in the vault of my heart, so that I do not sin myself bankrupt. That every time you're sinning, you are withdrawing. You're withdrawing from the deposit of life that God has put in you. That's how it renders in the message. And I find it to be very interesting. That every time you sin, it is like you're withdrawing from the deposit of life. Because I, I don't know whether you would be honest with me, but if you were to be honest, you would tell me that every time you sin, it leaves you feeling horrible. It leaves you wondering what is wrong with me. It leaves you wondering, could I not just trust in God? There's a poem I love by um, a, a man called John Flavel. And John Flavel says, Flavel, John Flavel, Nandiqua Flavel, right? So John Flavel writes and says, we should call our hearts to account every evening and ask ourselves, where have you been, O oh, naughty heart? Where have you been, O oh, vain heart? We should ask our hearts every evening, could you not abide by the fountain of delights? Was there more pleasure in the creation than in the creator? Where have you been? And he says the oftener, the more often the heart is met with um, these checks and balances, the less it will wander. So we ought to call ourselves every single time. Because every time you ask yourself, where have you been? You start to think, Lakini, why did I do that? Why did I hoot at that person like that? A friend of mine, um, Newton Muthi, used to say to me that out of the abundance of the horn, the mouth speaketh. No, out of the abundance of the heart, the horn speaketh. Ama the horns hooteth. No, ukiwa kwa barabara, alafu mtu wana kuingia. Kuna horn ya salamu. Pip. Pip, pip. Alafu kuna ile horn ingine enye unafanyanga. Unajua? Pip, 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 pip. Out of the abundance of the heart. If that horn were to speak the English language, Majina umemuita kwa kweli, Majina yote mabaya niyake. 
<laughs> you ask yourself, Fukirudi Gioni, if you sit down, just you and your savior, you're just like, why did I hoot like that? Apozik panya bizi. Nesata wewe mtu wata umjui? Ama mungine unamkimbiza kwa bala. Ame kupita hivi. Unamkimbiza kwa sababu ulipati wa Gary V8. Engine turbo. Unakanyaga hivi ndio mpita na hiyo viti yake. Ndiyo muonyeshe kivumbi kwa kweli. Ajue kuna watu wakudharau kwa barabara na kuna wengine sema nani. Na ukipita lazima ufanya nini? You have to give them the side eye. Lazima muangali. I don't know why that is. For those of you who drive, why, why must you look at the person that you are passing? Ameka kwa ile linia, auta na anaenda kama na kona uchungu kwa mgu. Unamua shia mataa, unapigia honi, alafu unampita hivi. Alafu unampita. Ukimpita unamuangalia. Alafu unatoka chua. Ukiwa dhika ye bado wako pale nini. <laughs> Say my God help me. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to say that every single time, if you sit, sit long enough with God in the evenings, at the end of every day, to just audit how your actions have been, audit how your day has been, it will bring you back to these things that we are talk- calling guarding the anointing. So that you don't just live your life without monitoring and evaluation. So that you don't live your life without auditing it. Ati uliokoka ile siku ingine utaoditiwa ni tukifika mbinguni. Hakuna mtu wanaeza kuambia, hakuna mtu, wewe unakuanga tu hivyo, una, unaenda hatu. Because you know that accountability is good, but people will only hold you accountable to the, things you, to the areas you let them into. Sindio? Kuna mambo ingine nyo watu wajui kukusu. Those private conversations, ama that your own private thoughts, if you don't sit with Jesus, who knows those things, nobody can. Sisi tunakuona hapa wakawa, meremeta, mkiniona hivi kwani mnajua nimekuwa api. Apana. Lakini Yesu si anajua. Nikiketi na yeji yoni. And say, Lord, this is your time. Audit me. A prayer that David used to make. And say that, God, search my heart. Wengine unaona ukiambia mungu, search my heart. <laughs> anyway, um, let's begin to wrap it up. He says, and indeed to all Macedonia, continue to increase more and more. Verse 11, he says, aspire to lead a quiet life. That's the first thing. He says to them, aspire to lead a quiet life. Aspire to lead a quiet life. Aspire. The word aspire has the thought of ambition. He says to them, make it your ambition. You see, most of us say, what do you want to be when you meet with a child? What do you want to be? They tell you, this is my ambition. When I come and I ask you, what do you want to do in the next five years? I saying, I want to build my house. I want to do what? I want to have finished paying my school fees for my children. I want to do my PhD. You know, I want to expand my business. Those of you that are in school, you're saying, I must, I have to graduate by that time. Those are your ambitions. Paul is saying, for you to guard the anointing, this is one of the things. Aspire to lead a quiet life. This one's there are only three, so we're going to talk to our neighbors. Stand to your neighbor, tell them, aspire to lead a quiet life. <laughs> quiet has the thought of peace, the thought of calm, the thought of rest, the thought of satisfaction. Quiet has the idea of contentment. And those are very, very unusual qualities in our modern life. Peace. You don't want peace. You don't want peace. <laughs> you, you, you're thinking, a quiet life. The moment I said it, some of you thought, a quiet life? What does that look like? A quiet, quiet? Some of you that are introverted, that's what you desire. You aspire more than Paul. You aspire a quiet life. Mepanga na mtu mpatane date. Hata, hata unaka kwa nyumba tu una... How just keep talking? Oh, I'm too like I'm sorry, we um, something has come up. I can't mention. Oh no! Oh no! Uksema oh no! Unatovi atu. Oh no! Unarudi kwa kitanda. Oh no! It's okay. We can plan next time, dear. <laughs> so some of you have no problem with leading a quiet life, but what Paul is talking about, aspiring to lead a quiet life, he's saying to them, as we're thinking about guarding the anointing, because that's what we're talking about. You must look at the kind of life that you live right now. Will you call it a quiet life? A life that is at rest. Are you at rest? Have you entered God's rest? 
Is it a quiet life? Are you content? Timothy says, Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 and 6, but godliness with contentment is of great gain. Are you living a content life? Because in our generation, in our present day and age, we are living a life of chasing after things, of selfish ambition. So he's saying, let's reroute that. Let's re undo that. Let's now settle and fix our ambitions correctly. Let's put our ambitions in the right way. Let's aspire to lead a quiet life. He's not saying a believer should not have ambition. We're going to see that in just a minute. But he's saying to them, you, let your ambition be that one of a quiet life. If you go back to the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, what brought them down, Adam and Eve, was this selfish ambition. They were just discontented. Because the enemy says to them, did God really say? And so on and so forth. But in the beginning, God had given them all things, hadn't he? He had given them all things and told them, I have given, surely I have given you everything. What selfishness must you have? What greed must you have for you to overlook everything you've been given and say, Ameni paisi zote, ile ameni nyima ndiyo mzuri, ile nataka. See, that must be very, a very selfishly ambitious life. Yani umepewa kila kitu. Ile moja yenye umeambiwa, iwa chana na ayo. Umeambiwa, ata usikuze kwa sababu siya, siya manufa kwako. Sama, iyo ndiyo nataka. Kwa ni wewa, ina ganja mani? Mtu wa wapi wewe, umepewa kila kitu. Those of you again, that are parents. You've given your child something. You've given him some money, you've given him some things, and then Rambia niwekpatia kila kitu uku. Lakini fungu ya gari msichukwe. So umeenda usha go umewachi hapo. Nyumba lefa mambia gari msitumie. Sema, ah, hiyo ndiyo tunataka. Mbona alituachie hile gari ndogo ime bondeka bondeka. Na tuachie hii gari yake mzuri masides tusiguze. Hiyo ndiyo tunataka kuendesha. Ukirudi, upate imetumiwa. Hawa watoto karibu wafurushe kwa nyumba. Sema, kwa ni nyinyi ni wawapi? Kwa ni nyinyi ni waina gani? Ni mewapatia kila kitu lakini muna taka kunimaliza. <laughs> anyway, you're looking at your life, you're asking yourself, what quality of life am I living? Is it a quiet life? Am I, or do, or am I being led by selfish ambition? Have I been given all things and I never sit to think God has been so kind to me? Imagine I have all these things. The one thing I don't have now is a job. When you start to lead a quiet life, beloved, you become, automatically you become grateful. You develop a heart of gratitude. Because constantly, in the, away from the loudness and the melee of the world, you start to have more time to look inside and to realize God has been kind to you. Mtoto wako anakukulia kichwa ndani ya nyumba. Hajua kuna wale wanakuliwa kichwa huko nje. Ati wewe ile inakukulia, ile inawakula kichwa, ni hata wajuyo mtoto alienda wapi. It's been three months now. Unasikia anga tu wanaoneka nanga, so unajua wajakufa. Lakini ya ujuya kwa hapi. Ati wewe wako wanakusumbulia hapo kila jioni. Like clockwork at eight, ataingia. Masasa, you, you complain so bitterly. When you start to lead a quiet life, you'll remember at least we are nakujanga. Yeah, I know, I know. It doesn't sound like anything to be grateful for. But when you start to lead a quiet life, there are some things that will change because you'll stop comparing yourself to other people. Shida ya wengine wetu ni kwamba ata atuna masaya ya kuketi tu sisi na mungu. There's no moments of quiet. When you wake up in the morning, unamshu wana kelele, vigele gele via alam. Alarm clock imelia umeamka umetoka Umengia bafuni umetoka Hapo umekimbia wapi Umetengeneza chai umetoka Umeanza kukorofisha mstano wakazi Aja eka chai sijui sukari Aja kwenye ni yeke ni tabeba Ni ntrole Hii gari kwa ni ijapanguzwa ni mechelewa ume... You have been making noise on the road You are hooting at everybody Ama kama uko kwa matatu Pale matatu ni jamani Kila mtu wana kusinya Wanaingia wana kukanyaga kwa hii matope Unakasirika You've been making noise since you woke up, you've gotten into the office. Ni hapa na pale. Biashara umefika unasema, mbona umeni songezea vitu zangu? Hii ni space yangu songeza huko. Hii ni menipia ya kanjoa di hapa. You have been making noise the whole day. By the time you're going back home in the evening, you're so tired. And why won't you be tired? You've been talking the whole day. Ah. So how many of us belong to the blackout club of Kenya? Ukifika tu una blackout tu. 
Hata chakula wanashindwa wakuamshe ukule ama wakuache ulale. Juhu nakaa mtu harassed kwa hii maisha. Na si wale watu wakona mafamilie peke. Hata single peoples. Bona sifio watu nguyaz. Hata awishi na mtu. Lakini kwa simu. Unaye mpenzi lakini mpenzi yo si mpenzi kwa kwele. Kula kitu mnapenda mwakorofisha. Na usikuwe desu. Simu wachane tu. Yo si spiritual instruction. <laughs> anyway some of you live such a loud life when you get home in the evening you just black out so you don't even have time to carefully think and then tomorrow and repeat the cycle when will you have time to pay attention to the anointing that God has placed in your life when will you have time to sit and to think? Sometimes you're reading a book, you're reading the Bible, you're doing a Bible study, but your mind is not even there. Bible the whole morning. In the first service, Pastor Angeshi made us do that. Alianza Ibada na youth service discussion. What was your rema for the week? Nakiti na jambia, nimesoma Bible li wiki, yotebede, what was my rema? Loud life. Today the apostle is reminding us about something that he shared with the church in Thessalonica and it will be a benefit to us today in guarding the anointing. He says to them, aspire. Make it your ambition. When he's saying that to them, we'll borrow the same because he's saying you're not yet there. Make it your ambition. So if you're here and you're not living a quiet life, you have not been cancelled. There is space. There is room for growth. Pastor Alice says the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. So when we live here today, all of us are on assignment. And I can't say my life is too quiet. No, all of us have something to do, have some work to do. When we look at the kind of life that we live, maybe it is even social media. You can't just be in a place without your phone. Sometimes I say, social media, I remember some time when I was sharing, and I went to a, a youth minister's conference, and they were saying that the, the, the sheep are online, the shepherd cannot afford to be offline. They are telling us, you can't just be away from social media. And that is true. I need to know what is happening or whatever, whatever, in the youth for the young people that I am leading or serving with. But then it can't be every single moment of my life. Ikopale. Fine, use my phone, but I'll use my phone. Sometimes I'll read a book, sometimes I'll read the Bible, sometimes I'll watch something, sometimes... I'm not saying cut yourself off from it. Because I'm not saying cut yourself off from COVID in my internet. At least it's demonize. Hey, bwana yesu kwa kweli ilituokolea. Mazoom meetings, daughters on bended knees hoye. Mungekuwa mnapatana hadi saa hiyo, mnapatana nga wapi kwa physical meeting. It's not possible. But kwa Zoom, men in the house hoye. Wanaume kwa kweli maombi asubui. It is not possible to meet every single time during the week, like on Mondays, on the Wednesdays, at in physically. But online, you're able to do the prayers. So it's a beautiful thing. But you must sit down and ask yourself, how much, is this, how much of my time is this thing consuming? We were talking about that conversation with my sister this morning, and we were just saying how even the algorithm has been set to know the things that are good to you. Is this him who was in a tuskiza? Mkwapo mmeketi na mtu mnasema, eh hata natafuta nguo ya kwenda hiyo hiyo event. Amesema tu vaingo za white nini nini nini. Ukiingia hivi, zile ads zenye zimejaa, sponsored ads, ni white dresses, white floral dresses for events, white nini nini. Amesema, <laughs> "Wewe kuna sema nimekuwa nikitaka kwenda gym, hii mwaka weight loss. Ukiingia unapata hapo ma gym fitness programs." Amesema, "Oh yeah, let me get this, let me get this. You can spend your whole day right there." But he says, aspire to lead a quiet. Tell your neighbor, aspire to lead a quiet life. Second thing he tells them, aspire to mind your own business. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that mind your own business is a spiritual concept. <laughs> it is a biblical idea. It simply means that the Christian must focus on his or her own life and matters instead of meddling in the lives of other people. See, you are leading a quiet life. It will be easier to mind your own business when you're leading a quiet life. So he says to them, mind your own business. 
Now, he doesn't mean that every individual is supposed to mind their business in such a way that we are all to live apart from one another. He's simply just saying, Usishinde maisha yako ni kujua ya wengine. Na kutoa ya pale hapa, ukiapeleka kwa wale, na kuingiza huku, ikikuwa prayer request, na kuingiza. No, he's saying, mind your own business. Kama, if it does not involve you directly, unasema kwa kweli paulo mtume amesema, I news. I news swata kidogo. Isi kuhusu ya mwenyewe kuliko yako. Bona sifiri. It doesn't sound like such a spiritual thing, sindio? But it's one of the things that will help us to guard the anointing. Because if we reduce the time that we take on other things that are not even helping or building us up, it will help us to increase the time to mind the anointing of God of our lives. Some of us, it is politics. Hey! See, you will politic the whole day and politicize. And you know everything about everything. I'm not saying do not be informed. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you must at some point realize that even some of these politics, unajua ingine hata ijengi inchi. Ya kujenga inchi ni siyasa mzuri. Lakini ile siyasa mbaya, unajua yule alifanya nini na yule alifanya nini. Unajua, unajua yule akifanya. By the way, wache ni niwambie. Uyo wakiingia, wacha ni kuambie. Sasa na ingi kesho. I kubadilishi kitu. <laughs> Talking about politics is such a, you're just like almost walking on eggshells. I'm just like, will I, who, who will I? But no, really. I, for some of us, it is football. But there's a, there's a good level of entertainment. Let's talk about football. Let's share it. Let's, but then there are times, it can't be that every time. Hey, bro, kwaje. Mweche kiapo aje yu story ya Chelsea. Ama Chelsea, by the way, labda atakai ingi ucheza mpira. Labda wana kwenye tuwa imbaji na tunawa for sinki, wacha zembe. You will never pick up your phone to just check on your brother, just know how you doing, bro, kopoa. Anything you guys need? No, mkopiti? Okay, sawa, salimia wife. Sawa. Every single time, unashugulika na mamba ya watu wako Europe, wenye wako na pesa nyingi, pesa inakaa tu shida. Hata wajeka kwa account ya wameka kwa account za wa. Ha, ha, ha. Tell your neighbor, aspire to mind your own business. And then finally, he says, aspire to work with your own hands. Aspire to work with your own hands. Make it your life's mission and your ambition to work with your own hands. Heni anakuambia, anaambia kanisa ala hapa, tesaloniki anawambia kwa kweli, toka katika shule ya omba omba, toka kabisa. Aspire to work with your own hands. How many of you know that there is joy and great pride in something you have done yourself? You have invoked the name of the Lord. And you know that the Lord is not just, to quote Pastor Wangeshi, he's not just on it, he is in it. And then you have worked with your hands and you have seen the result. By the way, even when it fails, it is with pride. Watu wakisema, entrepreneurs in the house? <laughs> because you have aspired to work with your own hands. I have a friend of mine. I did not. Who, <laughs> who does so many businesses? So many. Sometimes I hear, and I'm like, Ata hii nafanya? I'm like, sasa hii unafanya alini? Sama haitaji ni kue hapo? Hii nafanyanga ni kiitiwa. Lakini nakua, na, wanajua nafanya hapia yo. Unataka nini ifanywe? Akona a guy for everything. Sama, ata nilikuwa na shimbiwa. Kuna mtu anataka ku, anataka kidney transplant. Ninajua mtu. <laughs> so long as the Lord is in it, <laughs> aspire to work with your own hands so that you do not become a burden to other believers. Bwana sifiwe. We are not saying that you may not get into hard times. No, 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 beloved, that's not what we are saying. I have to say, Mr. Samutu wakikuja kukuitisha, unawambia, nakwambia, 
Pastor Beatrice, sija kula sapa jioni naambia wewe aspire to work with your own hands. That's not what you are saying. No, we must help one another. We must check on one another. But as we are helping each other, we are not just giving people fish. We are also showing them how to fish. Kama we uko na biashara unafanyaga na mtu anakuja kukuuliza kila wakati umsaidie umsaidie. Unamshika mkono kama unaweza. Si ni biashara legit. Ni kazi? Yes, unamshika mkono, unamwambia kuja nikuonyeshe. Lakini kuna watu wengine sasa wenye unamshika mkono uende ukamuonyeshe. Anasema eh hiyo siwezi fanya. Nilikatazwa na daktari. Akakwambia huko unafanya nini? <laughs> That's what Paul is talking about now. You must aspire to work with your own hands. If you're here you're a student, aspire to work with your own hands. Can't be kila wakati unaketi formation formation guys. Guys mmesoma. Mmesoma. Ilikuwa hata kwa formation natutaki mtu ambaye hajasoma chochote. Tunakata formation lakini kama ingekuwa Sema we unatusaidia na nini juu unasema mimi niko hapa katikati ndio hawa kilipitishia na mimi napisha wazazi wenye mko in the house najua mjui tunasema nini ikae hivyo ikae hivyo kwa kweli but aspire to work with your own let me finish by saying this somebody shared this thought with us i don't remember where i don't know whether it was in our cell or or was i sharing it in the, i don't remember but somebody said with us, to us When you think about the story of the Tower of Babel, Tower of Babel, seen in Genesis chapter 12, I think, there about. These people were of one mind, one language. They said, let us build a tower that will go up into the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. And they started to build it. It says God in heaven looks like this and so Allah. Ah, majirani wanakuja wanyua kina nani hao? Let us go down and confuse them because nothing shall be able to stop them. Let us go and confuse their language. The only thing that stopped that tower, that project from being what it was supposed to be was that God was against it. God himself says, if we do not confuse their language, nothing shall stop them from accomplishing whatever they have set out to do. Because they had oneness, unity, and they were working with their own hands. Now I want you to ask yourself if that was the case about those people how much then is it if you are doing a work there is unity you are working with your hands and then God is in it what shall stop that thing because the only thing that stopped that project at Babel was that God was against it because they were doing it with the wrong motive they were making a name for themselves it was not to the glory of god how about if this business you're working on this studies you're doing whatever family you're building if you're doing it to the glory of god how much more of a blessing will it be how much more will it prosper because now it is to the glory of god and god is in it tell your neighbor aspire to work with your own hands na hamna aibu kwa kazi safi kwa kweli hamna aibu unachapa biashara yako vizuri alafu unajipanguza unakuja unainua mikono yako kanisani hamna aibu whatever it is that you do very soon we are going to be doing um was looking for pastor Joe. we are going to be looking we are going to be doing a soko sunday where we have an opportunity for us to just showcase what we do kama unakuanga unakata mboga usikatae kuleta mboga yako kuja unatuonyesha unakata kata mboga hivi inatoka hivi kama yeah. Kwa sababu wengine tunakata mboga jamani hatujui kama ni kabichi ama ni sukuma. Usikatae maana hamna aibu kwa kazi safi. Sasa aspire to work with your hands. Sema hata hata ni dharau na hakuna mwenye anakulipia rent, watakudharau vipi? Huja kanisani utuonyeshe ile kazi unafanya. Kuna msichana kwa Twitter anaitwa Chapati Mistress. Dada huyo yuapika chapati. Chapati iko na minced meat ndani. Na ni chapati tu. Unaitoa hivi unakula chapati ukikula hivi umeikula na stew yake tayari. I mean wow. And, and she has become such a big deal she's getting all these endorsements from our companies are cooking flour na sijui mafuta. Akikanda tu inini yake ati unga ionekane ikiwa hapo hiyo brand. Ah watu wanajua. Ndio zitokea hivi lazima ninunue unga. Oh okay watu ni Work with your own hands. Anga keti aseme sami msichana mrembo hivi alafu nikae nikipita chapati nani atanitaka? Sasa ndio wanamkimbilia hao wenye wana. <laughs> That is how you got the anointing beloved. Because when you're working with your own hands, you're not 
thinking about how to do this dubious means how can i get that how many how can i nita ama nimfanye hivi nifanye ama wanipatie zana huku ama no you're working with your own hands you're not putting the anointing in jeopardy bwana yesu asifiwe tell your neighbor aspire to lead a quiet life aspire to mind your own business aspire to work with your own hands and that is how you got the anointing I want you to make a prayer for yourself in just a minute and ask the Lord to help you as you set out to do those things this week in the name of Jesus Christ because it worked for the church right there it is going to work for the church here today in the name of Jesus Christ Father in the name of Jesus I thank you for your sons and daughters as we have studied today and gone through your word on how to guard the anointing the holy spirit which you've released upon our lives the divine enablement that you've given to us I pray that Lord you would release it to us this week to aspire to lead a quiet life it is in the the leading of the quiet life that we will take pauses in between our day at the end of the day in the beginning of the day to sit with you to check in with you to know what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong what we are doing right that we will abound more and more what we are doing wrong that by the enablement of the holy spirit that we will stop to do those things in the name of jesus that we will aspire to mind our own business we will not be so concerned with others that we forget to mind our own lord jesus christ we pray that we will aspire to do what with our own hands lord jesus because therein you shall command a blessing you shall command life there shall be fruitfulness there shall be an a hundredfold blessing when we aspire to do these things and lord when all these things are done we do them only to the glory of your name and to the fame of the kingdom that other people looking at us would desire the victorious god of our salvation that the gospel would be spread that people would desire you more and more and that your fame would be spread throughout the earth to the praise and to the glory of your precious name we cannot do these things alone we do these things to guard the anointing that has been released upon us even by the feeling of the holy spirit we pray that the holy spirit himself will help us to carry out these things to do them so that all glory and praise would come back to you we receive the answers by faith in jesus name we pray amen the lord give you a beautiful week in jesus name